So Gordon, you were uh, supposed to speak today on the PREVAIL trial, but we weren't able to uh, hear the results of the PREVAIL trial because there was an embargo break. But, but you've reviewed the study and the slides, so what do you think? So yes, uh, I was looking forward to hearing about uh, PREVAIL, which is a follow-up study to protect AF. And it's using the Watchman occluder device of the left atrial appendage to see whether or not it could prevent thromboembolic complications of atrial fibrillation, as well as oral anticoagulants. So this study was, I think, a study of two things, really. A study of the efficacy of the device itself, and also a study of the safety of deployment of this device. And in fact, the three study primary endpoints were designed to look at exactly those questions. There was an early endpoint that was designed to look at safety and complications of implantation of the device, a mid-range uh, endpoint, which was to look at both event rates as well as safety, and then a longer range, 18-month uh, uh, endpoint, again, looking at thromboembolic complications. In terms of those complications, I think they demonstrated that the device is non-inferior to oral anticoagulants. Uh, the other piece of well, good specifically news... specifically warfarin, right? Specifically warfarin, right. Specifically warfarin, you're exactly right. But the other, th the other piece of good news, I guess, for the investigators was that the devices seem to be able to be deployed in a safer fashion with fewer complications than, the than in the PROTECT AF trial. So in that sense, um, I think we're a little bit further along with the use of a device like this, uh, but perhaps not in lieu of oral anticoagulants, but maybe in a population of patients who, for whatever reason, can't take oral anticoagulants. That is, they've either, either had bleeding complications or have had a thromboembolic complication while on therapeutic doses of warfarin or one of the factor 2A or 10A inhibitors. Now, in this trial, the one of the three outcomes was not statistically significant, and that's the one that evaluated the outcomes over 18 months that included the immediate post-implantation period. Correct. And there were a small number of events there, and they had to use some, uh, some statistical uh, fancy maneuvers like imputation, but you're right. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that there is still uh, some risk of implanting this device early on. But again, it's a lot better than it was in PROTECT AF. So specifically from your clinical perspective, what group of patients should consider this as an alternative? Right, so if this device gets approved by the FDA for any indication, um, my feeling would be that the patient who would benefit from it would be somebody who has a CHAD score of greater than or equal to two, who's a candidate for anticoagulation, who has atrial fibrillation, and who can't be anticoagulated with an oral medicine for whatever reason, either in efficacy of that oral medicine or bleeding on that medicine. I, I don't think right now we're prepared to say this is either or as a primary therapeutic intervention. Absolutely. We yeah. definitely need more follow-up. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Gordon. Sure.